You're listening to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, and co-host, Keelan Harvey, on Alternative Talk AM 1150. Now, back to the show with local mortgage experts, Tina Mitchell and Keelan Harvey. Welcome back to The Money on 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, March 2nd show. I am your host, Tina Mitchell. And your co-host, Keelan Harvey. You're a local mortgage expert. Uh, we're here to help you build a strong financial blueprint one week and one show at a time. Yeah, if you're hearing our show <laughs> at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast, but we're here to answer any questions or connect you with the guests that we have on the show. You can call the show at one 855 1150 Again, that's one 855 1150 or online at themoneyr.com. And in studio right now, Claire Jones with Clarifications Coaching, Neural Leadership and Empowering Your Brain. Claire, thank you so much for joining us in studio. First time uh, yes, here with thank us. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, and a little bit about Claire. Claire is a neural leadership and wellness coach in Seattle, Washington. Coming from a background in the art world, she founded her first business two years out of college. She worked in a small business development for a while and found that leaders could only develop their business as far as they were willing and able to develop themselves. So true. Claire became fascinated with the concept of personal development and how it corresponded with her own self actualization process so that she decided to pursue a career in supporting others along their rewarding journeys towards self-improvement. Now Claire uses the latest neuroscience research to inform her coaching practices to uh, her clients and harness their power of their minds and maximize their personal and professional potential. Claire, this is fun. Um, elaborate. Neuro, you went into a bunch of fancy words there. Yes. What, ex- <laughs> what exactly? Neuro language, neuro loss, neuro science. Yeah, neuro, <laughs> neuro stuff. Yes, yes. What do you do? Tell us about it. Elaborate a little bit. It's basically using brain science to examine the brain and find out which areas light up when you're doing leadership tasks. Mm. So the Whoa. four facets of leadership to be effective are making decisions, facilitating change, collaborating with others, and self-regulation. And so the Neuroleadership Institute looks at those areas of the brain and sees, like, just sees what lights up when you're doing those kind of tasks. So then you can hopefully optimize your brain activity in a way that lets you be a better leader. And so I use their research to kind of just inform my coaching practices. That is crazy. Love that. Like well, she's talking about learn li- how to take care of your body, take care of your heart, take care of your mind, and if you can learn to use your brain to maximize the results that you're getting and to have a happier life, I mean, that's beautiful. Yeah, she's talking about like literally seeing it light up too. Like you're not, you know, like you're not hiding behind some show. Like this is really lighting up in your brain. This is data mm-hmm. that you yeah. can actually learn from mm-hmm. on how you're consciously or subconsciously reacting to things, right? Mm -hmm. Totally, totally. Yeah, that's what's really fascinated me about it because leadership has always kind of been a soft science. Mm -hmm. It's mostly based on behavioral and observing people in leadership context and making educated guesses. They're like, well, maybe that worked for that leader. Let's try it for this leader and see if it works for them. But using the fMRI machine, it's a new technology. It's only really been used in this context for the last 20 years. They're now able to see exactly what happens in your brain. How exciting. So it's kind of hard science meets soft science for leadership skills. Yeah, I love that. So share a little bit more about your why behind and how you got in and started your coaching business. Sure. Yeah. Um, So as you mentioned, I did start out in small business development Mm -hmm. and that trend for leaders to not be able to get to that next level in their businesses because they were running against personal limitations. They had mindsets and habits and perspectives that got them to this point in their business. Mm -hmm. And they were, you know, mostly functional, mostly sustainable, but they couldn't get to that next level. Mm -hmm. They couldn't really jump that hope, you know, and they just ended up plateauing. So more often than not, They had to work on these personal mindsets, personal limitations, personal perspectives that were limiting them. Mm -hmm. And since I had been through my own personal development journey after closing my first business, you know, it feels like a failure when your first business closes. And it's really a journey of personal development to get beyond that. And so I just becoming become absolutely fascinated with this concept of neuroleadership because I had been researching leadership 
skills and practices for the businesses that I was working with Mm -hmm. and just became fascinated. I was just like, this is awesome. Like I was reading neuroscience research papers for fun in my free time. I was like, what (laughs) what is happening? (laughs) I was like, why am I reading the 600 page textbook for fun? Like who does that? Um, but Somebody that's really passionate about yeah, what she's doing. Yeah. And that, you know, that really is what makes an expert and makes a leader is picking a field of something that you're really passionate about. Totally, totally. Yeah. And so I decided that coaching was pretty much the way that I wanted to move forward in that yeah. because I didn't didn't really get lit up as much with the business consulting and business development as I did with the personal side of things. Tina, another tragedy to triumph story. Her it her tragedy is. led mm-hmm. her to her passion. It always, it always does. Unless she's... you unless you don't embrace the tragedy, then you miss the triumph that is waiting there for you. Yeah, so I true. love it. So you mm-hmm. refer to specifically neuro leadership. Let's mm-hmm. talk a little bit about what is that. Neuro leadership that comes from the Neuro Leadership Institute. They're over on the East Coast, and they just basically look at all these fMRIs and they do all of these studies and they actually have really close relationships with big companies like HP and Microsoft and they work with people within their companies to see how they can create better leaders. So yeah, That's awesome. so how do you frame your neural leader- leadership coaching sessions? What is that? What's that look like? Uh, as I mentioned before, there's the four facets of effective leadership, making mm-hmm. decisions, facilitating change, collaborating with others, and self-regulation. So I use those four areas to frame our sessions. And we start out in the first session with a wheel with the four quadrants. And I ask them to rate based on their satisfaction levels, comfort levels with those skill sets, one to 10. And then we look at what has what have you discovered through uh-huh. that process? You know, and then we talk about powerful questions and we look into what you're learning about yourself. Who are you being? What mindsets are you relying on? What perspectives are you relying on? And then we use that learning process and self-reflective process because a lot of people don't have the time to sit down and really self-reflect, especially Mm -hmm. if they're a business leader because they just can't really justify the time. (laughs) There's too many things on your to-do list. So having that space to really self-reflect and use those powerful questions that I have for my coaching background, it really intensifies that learning experience and makes those insights more tangible. And then at the end of every session, we come up with a action plan for you to do in the next coming weeks. Mm -hmm. So I try to space out my sessions every other week because that gives you enough time to make progress on your action plans. And You know, they and the thing is, is that they actually create their own actions. I don't tell them what to do because I'm not an expert in their life. They're the expert in their life. Yeah. So just help them get to that answer. And that's what the best coaching is, is you you ask the right questions and you get them to to continue to answer until they come up with their own solution. And so I love that. And yeah, there, you know, I call it really reflecting. You have to have that time. It's critically important. Um, It's as important. We get up and brush our teeth every day. We take a shower every day. We eat when we're hungry. We drink when we're thirsty. And um, why we don't work on in uh, self-improvement, creating that space, our affirmations, our reflection, uh, good and the bad things, all of that so critically important. So I, I really, really love what you're doing and what a difference that you're uh, making in the world uh, and to people that hire you. So thank you. Yeah, totally. And, and Claire, you also uh, help people with wellness. So mm-hmm. with your wellness coaching sessions, what does that entail? I use a similar framework that comes out of the Neuroleadership Institute. They came up with a framework called the Healthy Mind Platter, and that's seven aspects of your life that should be balanced in order to have optimal brain functioning. And so you can divide those into social needs, physical needs, and cognitive needs. So the social needs are connecting time and playtime. The physical needs are sleep time and um, physical time, like mm-hmm. exercise. And then the cognitive needs are focus time, time in, and time down. And so we do the same kind of wheel aspect where we look at those seven slices and find out what their satisfaction levels are with those. And then we use that as fodder for moving forward with our powerful questioning. So, Claire, who do you work with? Who is your perfect client that's going to most benefit from coaching with you? Sure. It's funny because I didn't really intend it for it to be this way, but it has turned out that most of my clients so far have been women who are in career transitions. Okay. 
I have been through a ton well, you of attract cr- the people you can help most. It, it, well, exactly. Yes. I've been through tons of career transitions myself, and uh-huh. it's just I'm on the same page with them, you yeah. know, and I can instantly see where they're struggling or where they're succeeding, and I have that ability to create that space in a very authentic and genuine way, and it's it's really rewarding. Yeah, so if you're a female listening to the show, I mean, she'll work with maybe a guy here or there. But if you're a female looking for the, listening to the show and you're transitioning in your in your career, uh, which is going to have a effect on your life as well, uh, call the show so we can connect you with uh, mm-hmm. with Claire. So these specific, you say women in transition, and you, I mean, you just attract what you attract, right? Mm-hmm. What your what your brain's putting out there, just it comes back to you with your life experiences totally. and your passion. Mm-hmm. So, what specifically do you see as far as challenges with the folks that um, that you help? It's funny because career transitions can mean a lot of things. You know, a lot of people are on a lot of different paths. And so I've worked with women who are transitioning from home to work. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe they've been in the home for a long time and now they want to go out and get a job. I've worked with women who are going from work to home. You know, maybe they've come up across physical limitations. One of my clients was recently diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. Mm -hmm. And so she just had to severely limit the amount of time that she spent at work and the amount of time that she was physical at work too because of the amount of pain that she was going through. And being a woman that really prided herself in her level of productivity, Mm -hmm. it was really hard for her to be like, no, I actually have to focus on myself. It's like vital to my health at this point. Um, And so that's one challenge. And another challenge is if you are just, you know, increasing your roles in your current position Mm -hmm. or switching positions within the same company and you realize that you have limitations you know maybe you've never been in a leadership role before and you have to have that skill of collaborating with others and influencing them to get them to cooperate and get work done so I work with those kind of women as well and there's a lot of women um, that I and you know I I don't know why it seems like in in the recent years we see a lot more women that are finding what they've been doing for um, decades is not working for them anymore and they're finding their true passion and so that would be a a definitely a career transition Mm -hmm. that is perfect for your space Mm -hmm. so uh claire what is most rewarding to what you do it has to be that aha moment you know when Mm -hmm. you're in that coaching session and you're working through this challenge that they're facing and at first the path is really murky You know, they have a feeling something's not right there, but they're not really sure what. And then we always call that in coaching sessions, the shift is like, usually it's a big block of silence from the client because they are absorbing what they just realized. And that moment is just so powerful because you're really just like blowing their mind. (laughs) (laughs) And that aha moment is just so like I could have to stop myself from laughing when that's <laughs> happening because I'm just so delighted that yeah. they're having that moment that but I also just want to have them let them have that space yeah but that it's it's really rewarding well, you can to see it's see rewarding because you have a, just a huge huge smile on your face <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 and how cool is that because that's the pinnacle of change you know mm-hmm. at that moment they mm-hmm. are shifting their reality and they have a new perspective they're looking at things from a different way and you've created that which mm-hmm. has got to be feeling pretty good after a moment like mm-hmm. that i would say more facilitate than create but mm. yeah yeah. True. yeah it's because it's their reality but you help them sure. to get yeah. to that moment right yeah totally so tell us claire what is next for you well i'm actually in the process of creating some workshops and hopefully some eventual retreats in the area oh. um, that's kind of the next step that i'm looking at because you know i do one-to-one coaching but it's a lot more impactful to impact a group of people yes yeah you know and make that message a little more broadcasted Mm -hmm. so i'm actually partnering with a yoga instructor and a physical health coach who focuses more on the biological aspects and chemical aspects of health Mm -hmm. and we're working together to create workshops and hopefully retreats down the line yeah how exciting well excited to to see uh, as you expand and grow your your reach out Um, in your coaching business. So, Claire, thank you so much for joining us in studio. It was a real pleasure to have you. Look forward to having you you. back as well. And coming up next on The Money are Joe Mason with Caring Transitions, South Puget Sound, Downsizing and Estates Planning, right here at 1150 AM KKNW after the short break.